Welcome back to another edition of Ask the Buffalo, where you can ask any questions from the world of technology. In this episode, we are going to talk iPhone 5 and iPhone 4S, possibly, when it's coming, what carriers it might be coming to, the new Sprint Evo 3D, whether or not it's worthy of the hype or deserves to have the Evo name on it, uh, what the best phone in Sprint's lineup is. We are going to talk tablets, whether or not the HTC Flyer is a worthy investment, if the Galaxy Tab 10.1 is the best Android tablet on the market, how the ePad Transformer holds up. We're going to talk about my dream list of features for my most ideal phone, when a good time for you to get your new phone is, and we're going to mix in a little bit of more geeky tech all in one sort of small package. So stay tuned for another episode of Ask the Buffalo. Welcome back to another episode of Ask the Buffalo, where you can ask me, sort of a buffalo, anything that you want to know from the wide, wide world of technology, from cell phones, video games, laptops, tablets, or anything in between. You can ask your questions one of two ways. First, you can check out technobuffalo.com. We put up calls for questions all the time, and you can leave your questions in the comments. Or, if you prefer, you can send a message to my personal Twitter account at, at john 4 lakers or at TechnoBuffalo, asking whatever question you'd like, any time of day, any day of the week. Just use the hashtag AskTheB. All right, so let's go ahead and get the party started. The first question comes from user Jason D. And Jason asks, do you recommend the Evo 3D over the Evo 4G? Also, what's the best smartphone on Sprint at this time? Well, that's actually a very timely question. We just got the Evo 40 in and I've been testing it for the past two days. Uh, and thus far, I'm very impressed. The 3D, as I found most stereoscopic 3D, which just means glasses free. Actually, if you remember when you were a kid or maybe when your dad was a kid, the baseball cards that you'd move around and as you'd move it and look like the guy was swinging the bat, that's sort of the same idea behind the stereoscopic 3D. Um, you have to sort of hold it right at the right spot and then you can kind of see the 3D. Even if you take out the 3D part of this phone, you are left with a beastly, beastly 1.2 gigahertz dual core machine, uh, which is extremely capable. Uh, and just from that aspect alone, the 3D completely put aside, uh, it's a worthy successor to the Evo name. So if you're considering one or the other, uh, definitely go with the 3D. It's going to be a bit more future proof. Hopefully that helps answer your question. I also think that this guy is currently uh, the king of the Sprint smartphone lineup. Uh, you might also want to look, if you're not stuck with Sprint, a very comparable phone minus the 3D, but with an improved 8 megapixel camera, the HTC Sensation uh, for T-Mobile offers very similar specs uh, minus the 3D if that's not important to you. So hopefully that helped answer your question. Our next question comes from William Duckworth. William asks, what would your ultimate phone be if you could create one with any features? Question mark, question mark, question mark for extra emphasis. Uh, my first thing on my list would be battery life. I want a phone that can please get me through a full day of heavy use. I've got two exchange accounts that are always pulling that information. Uh, one to two hours of talk time, sometimes pick it to Bluetooth. I do a ton of internet browsing, obviously like being on video and I watch a lot of videos. So there's a lot of YouTube going on. I like to watch some movies and TV. So I just need a battery life that's going to work. I don't get that caught up in specs. I don't care if it's a 1.2 gigahertz dual core 1.5 or just a single core 1.5. As long as it's fast without any slowdown, I'm pretty happy. So I'd look for at least a QHD resolution. So a quarter HD would probably be just right. Uh, I love the Super AMOLED screens that Samsung has on their newest line of phones, the Galaxy S2 in particular. Those things are gorgeous! If you haven't seen them, definitely check them out. The colors pop. They don't have that sort of color hue tint that other phones had. I love the 4.3 inch screen size. I think it's absolutely perfect. And I love an 8 megapixel camera with a LED flash that just works and takes nice pictures. If possible, I love a full corded keyboard, but I'm not picky. So even an on-screen keyboard that works would be just about perfect for me. I'm a simple man with simple phone tastes. So hopefully that helped answer your question. The next question comes to us from user Monito Rock, and he asks, Do you think the original Galaxy S devices is still good now that the Galaxy S2 is out? 
Well, the original Galaxy S line devices that we had out on Sprint, T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, and other carriers around the world are still awesome phones. They're rocking a very, very capable one gigahertz hummingbird chip. They have a beautiful screen, but the Galaxy S2 is just so much better. It's not to say those devices are bad, but the Galaxy S2 is just so, so awesome. Uh, so the answer, and I hate to say that a phone is bad, because certainly the Galaxy S line of phones is still a great high quality phone, but if you're looking to get one right now, uh, you want to get one that's going to be a bit future proof. Chances are, if you're getting a new phone, you're going to be locked into two years. So you want to make sure whatever you're going to be using is going to be, you know, specced up for those two years. Uh, so the Galaxy S2 would definitely be uh, my choice, and I think it should be your choice when it comes to a carrier near you. All right, the next question comes from user Tokyo Drift Akash 8. Uh, you ask, John, my contract ends in November and I'm seeking an iPhone 4. Do you think there'll be an iPhone 4S slash iPhone 5? Well, if there are some things in the world that are certain, it's death, taxes, and a new iPhone probably is just a few months away. That seems to always be the case. So yeah, there will be an iPhone 5, iPhone 4S, iPhone 17,000, whatever. Yeah, we're going to see a new iPhone. Uh, and with Apple, it's especially bad because you... Don't, if you don't get the phone right when it comes out, there's always a new one coming. And there's always rumors that are of a new one coming. Certainly, I probably don't help uh, put those to rest. But the rumors are hearing that we're going to have a new iPhone, whether it's a 4S or a 5 in September. So if your contract's up in November, chances are you'll be able to get that new phone. I know there are a lot of you uh, that are in that same boat. All right, so the next question comes from an easy-to-pronounce name, user Ramon. And Ramon asks... Which tablet do you recommend? The Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, Acer Iconia Tab A500, the Asus ePad Transformer, or the Motorola Zoom? That was a lot of questions. And the one tablet I think that perhaps you didn't mention is the HTC Flyer, uh, is also a fantastic tablet. So if you guys read or saw my review on the Asus ePad Transformer, you'll know that I thought it was probably the best Android tablet out there. Uh, well, there's a new tablet in town that I think is even better than that one. It seems like every week, much like cell phones, there's a new tablet coming out. But the Galaxy Tab 10.1 is an amazing tablet. It is extremely thin. It does the NVIDIA dual-core processor good and justice with a beautiful screen. Uh, this screen is probably one of the best, most responsive screens that I have ever seen uh, in tablets. And it does in a very thin package. So my first choice would definitely be the Galaxy Tab 10.1, followed very closely by the Asus ePad Transformer, then anything else, and then the Motorola Zoom uh, would be last. I was extremely disappointed with the Motorola Zoom. Uh, Galaxy Tab 10.1, Asus ePad Transformer. If Android tablets are your thing, those are definitely two of the best on the market. They are screaming fast. I, I can't believe how thin actually Samsung is able to make the Galaxy Tab 10.1. Really got to put one in your hands and hold it, and you'll be very impressed with the engineering of it. All right, so let's go to the next question. This question comes from Twitter user Ricky Garrett, and Ricky asks, what does your ideal iPhone 5 look like? All right, so my ideal iPhone 5 would for sure have LTE. Please, LTE. I'm an AT&T user, so please, AT&T, give me LTE. Uh, at the very least, HSPA Plus, faster data. Uh, I would ideally love a 4.3 inch screen. Love to keep the retina display uh, resolution there, certainly upping it a little bit. Sometimes people get caught up in what the resolution of a display is, but the higher the resolution, the smaller things are going to look. So even if the resolution stayed the same, but the screen size got a bit bigger, I still think the screen will look nice and beautiful. So 4.3 inches, certainly a little bit thinner, is always preferred. Better battery life, as I talked about, is a must. And I'm hoping for a secret, super secret updates, iOS 5. The new notifications are certainly welcome. iMessage is a welcome addition. The home screen notifications are a welcome addition. But in my mind, iOS is still a little bit on the stale side. Uh, we're very much left with the same functionality and the same look and feel that we had since 2007. So something that could spice that up would always be appreciated. So that would be my ideal iPhone 5. I'd love it to be available on all carriers, so Sprint, T-Mobile, whatever carrier in the world you might be on, uh, I'm sure you'd love to have the option. So iPhone prevalence everywhere, iPhone 5 perhaps coming to a carrier near you, at least if Apple is listening to me, which I doubt they are. Next question comes to us from Twitter, 61Gabster, and you ask, 
The Apple Back to School promo gives you a $100 app credit instead of an iPod Touch. Like it or no? Um, it's a good question, totally subjective. I think it's nice to have the $100 credit, certainly. I know people would have liked to have had the discount towards the iPod Touch. However, if you look at the life of your, your computer, if you're getting a new computer, you got the Mac App Store on there. Uh, if you're getting, if you want to get an iPod Touch or you have an iPod Touch or an iPad or an iPhone, chances are at some point you're going to spend a hundred bucks on the App Store. It's just it's a very expensive ecosystem and there's so much out there. So Apple pretty much saying here, save a hundo. Uh, certainly quite nice. You can download the newest version of OS X Lion coming out soon. Uh, you could shave off, you know, 30 bucks there. You could download pages, numbers, or Keynote, and you sort of have all those choices there. Uh, if you use iBooks, for example, you can download maybe some of your textbooks if you're a student. So I like it. It's 100 bucks back that you wouldn't have had otherwise. It's hard to look a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, certainly 200 bucks would have been better. It'd give you a free laptop, even better. Uh, pay your mortgage, even better. Prevent an NBA and NFL lockout, lockout would be even more better. Uh, but 100 bucks is still 100 bucks. All right, so let's go to our last question. This also comes from Twitter, and this is user tuba nerd 88 Anyone with nerd or geek in your name, you are a friend of mine. Uh, and you ask, have you noticed any slowdown in performance with iOS 5 on your iPhone 4? Well, I've got iOS 5, and I've got it on my iPhone 4, and I have not noticed any slowdown or performance hits at all. Uh, the one thing that I have noticed, though, is a huge decrease in battery life. Uh, I'm looking at 20 to 30% now less than I had on the most recent build of iOS 4. Hopefully that'll be fixed with subsequent beta builds. As of this filming, we're still on beta one, um, but I haven't had any slowdown in performance. The only bug or hiccup I've noticed is a camera application sometimes opens a little bit slowly uh, and photos might crash uh, on occasion, but that's about it. The first beta build has been extremely stable, stable enough to use uh, as a daily driver. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Ask the Buffalo. We will be back here in this seat on your computer, tablet, or phone, however you're watching this, every Monday. So be sure to come back, ask your questions. I am your host, John Rettinger, and I will see you in the next video. It's my sprinkler phone dance. I see you looking at me, looking at you, looking at me.